Good morning, everyone. I hope that we are live. It tells me that we are live, but I don't always believe it. So good morning once again. It is great to see y'all. I am, it's been so long, you guys. It's been almost a few weeks since I had a any type of conversation with you, and I'm almost back. I know it seems like I'm officially back, but <laughs> I have three more days of pure torment. I'm working on a midterm project for school, and it's 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 difficult, but I'm doing it. So folks, thank you so much for joining me on this stream today where we will talk about prototyping um, some software. And I hope you can help me because I really, really need your help. Now, let's have a quick look at the comments. I can already tell that Tobbs is already spoiling me with some amazing coffee. Thank you so much, Tobbs. And hi to everybody else who is joining us. Hello to Durgesh, to uh, Chirgal, and hello to Jacob. Hey, tutorials on felt. Hmm, not sure what felt is, but I'll definitely check up all your comments later on. I'm going to answer all your questions. Um, and we will have, you know, our usual hangout stream after we take care of the, of the initial introduction. And thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Thank you, Josh. Thank you so much uh, to Jefferson and Par Parmesh and Muhir. And thank you to Rohit and Nick Luz, and wow, and even Tom is here. Hi, Tom, the birthday boy. Who has a birthday? <sighs> Who? Jesus, probably, because it's a uh, Christian. <laughs> it's it's a Christian, um, Christian Orthodox Christmas today, okay? <laughs> Merry Christmas to everyone, and if it's Tom's birthday, happy birthday to Tom. Maybe I missed a, uh, a birthday comment above. Sorry, guys, it's been a while. I'm, I'm excited. You, you know, you can tell that, uh, uh, yeah, it's Tom's birthday. So happy birthday to Tom. Uh, please say happy birthday because Tom is helping many of us in the Discord um, group that we have, Python Simplified. If you have any, any questions, uh, Tom will most likely be the first one to answer them. So definitely um, say hi in our Discord. And yeah, wow, super happy to see so many of you. So let's get on with with the prototype I have for you. And um, let's start with a brief introduction. And I apologize in advance if I have any speakers or if I'm not as, uh, if, I'm, if my presentation is not as good as usual, it's been a while since I talked to humans, okay? I'm surprised I can still speak. There's a big disadvantage in working from home and it's being very, very lonely. So um, yeah, so let's talk about this prototype where I really, really need your help. And all I need is a true feedback from you guys. I really want to know what you think about it. So in school this semester, I'm taking a module called Agile Software Development. And this all, this entire module is all about the fact that before we even write a single line of code, we need to plan our project really, really well. We need to do some market research. We need to do some prototyping. And only then, when we are happy with the results, when we received some uh, positive feedback from, from a wide variety of users, which is hopefully will be you guys, um, only then we can continue with developing this software. And this is going to be an open source project. So if, if you guys would like to tag along at a certain point of time, you definitely can. For now, we're just focusing on this submission that we have in three days. And an important part of it is your feedback. So. I really, really hope you can help me with this. And this feedback, guys, don't worry. It's only five simple questions. Very, very easy. I'm going to show you the form very soon. Now, before I'm going to demonstrate my software, let me slightly um, reduce the size of my head so I'm not going to block any elements on the screen. If you're curious, I am using a software called OBS Studio. It is amazing for broadcasting um, and for combining feed from your desktop and your camera or your phone, mobile phone camera, stuff like that, and basically sending it directly to my streaming software, which is StreamYard. We'll talk about it later on if you guys want to. We will have lots of time for questions after it. So let's move on with the prototype. You can definitely find the link in the description. Uh, it is a link of a platform called Figma. If you guys are not familiar with Figma, it's a really, really cool platform, and I think you guys will really, really like it um, after I explain it. Now, my Python simplified logo is kind of blocking <laughs> the most important part of this program. So let me see if I can remove it. Uh, brand. There you go. Aha. See? 
it happened. No more Python simplified logo above. Okay, so what do we have here? Now, for those of you who think that the software we are making is Google, <laughs> don't worry, that's not what we're doing. This is overreaching our capabilities. What we are building, and some of you already know it, is a Chrome extension. Ha! Huh. So if we press on this beautiful icon, well, not so beautiful, but an icon over here, there you go. This opens this lovely Chrome extension, which my microphone is blocking. Okay, so maybe I'll move myself to the other side altogether. Okay, problem solved. Hmm. Awesome. Not always. No, not, not. It's solved in the meanwhile, but it's not solved. Okay, this is much better. Sorry, guys. Technical, technical stuff. <laughs> Cool. So once we open this software, we see this not so beautiful automator logo. You guys know that I can do better. This is just a, a initial sketch. And I'm going to explain what the software does as we use it. Now, judging by the name, you can guess that this deals with automation and web scraping. So what we are trying to do here is, is something very clever. We are trying to utilize the browser window instead of using a web driver software, as we've seen with uh, with Selenium, right? Because we need to download a special web driver, which is a special browser window from which we do the automation. But with this Chrome extension, we are looking to skip this web driver um, situation, and we are looking to automate the actual browser window that you are using, Ha! Huh, which is really, really cool. Now, what we're going to do here is we will we the first thing we can do is we can load um, load a script from a URL. So, for example, you've made this awesome Selenium script and you are looking to to run it from this software. You can actually load a URL to your GitHub file or a file that you simply upload it to the Internet. In the later versions, we may add an option to upload a file from the computer and then instead of using the automation of our software, you can simply use a ready piece of script and you can just automate it by pressing on the play button, which is only available once you actually load a URL. For now, let's just keep it, keep it on the back burner. Now, if you do not have a script file to use, we will simply click on this record button and then we will click on a bunch of elements on the page. So for example, let's click on this input element and please, guys, if you're doing this on your end, please make sure you are actually clicking on this dashed line. If you don't, it's not going to work. So, ha, huh, it didn't work. Okay, so record. We're going to click on the actual line. Beautiful. Once we click on this line, we can see the code associated with a click on the element. So we have element by ID, and the ID of this element is input. Beautiful. If we click on another element, for example, this image, once again, let's click on the actual thing. Voila, we suddenly see the code associated with a, the click event on this image. Now, another question you may have is, Maria, what's the point of this software if we need to manually click on elements, right? The whole point of automation and web scraping is that we can take a bulk of elements and we can download them or we can we can, we can use them in a certain way instead of manually interacting with those elements. And to this, I invite you guys to focus on this beautiful text box. So the whole idea of this text box is once you stop your recording, once you are happy with all the elements you clicked on, you can then manually convert your code or adjust it to whatever you'd like. So for example, you can, of course, wrap this... Um, Let's change image equals element to element's as in many elements. And then instead of fetching a single image, we'll fetch all the images on the page. And then the line below it, for example, we can wrap it in a for loop. So instead of, instead of uh, taking the SRC attribute of this specific logo image, we will pick up the SRC attributes of all the images on the page. So it is very, very similar to the work we do in Selenium, and it allows you a very great level of customization. Now, once we have some kind of a script, we can then play it. We can hit on this play button, which I haven't, I haven't made interactive yet. It's a, it's a very simple prototype. And once we click on this play button, then our automation is being seen in action. Which, which will be beautiful and amazing. So this 
in my opinion, is a very big competitor of selenium. I think it solves a lot of problems that selenium doesn't. And actually, in the end of the day, we might use selenium for it. We don't know yet <laughs> what will be involved, but but yeah. Now I want you guys to tell me what you think about this software. I have been presenting it very nicely, but you guys have been doing web scraping and automation for quite some time. Many of you are following this channel for, for a few years, and many of you encountered this channel because you know you you were looking for web scraping and automation solutions that's why i trust you guys to have a very good opinion on this you can find the form in the description of the video as well and there you go i'm just going to go over it very very quickly so the form and unfortunately you need to log in to your google account for this form i am sorry it's just that since zero day x attacked my previous form i kind of uh, I don't have time to to filter out results. Um, I would, I would if I didn't have three days to complete it. But uh, unfortunately, yes, you have to log into Google, um, and this also limits you to a single submission of a form. Uh, but I'm not collecting your name. I'm not collecting your email. The only thing I want to know is answers to those five questions. And I would really appreciate it if you guys can help me. I'm gonna submit your answers in my midterm, and it's gonna be really cool. Not only my midterm, but you know, in a bunch of midterms. Now, oh, we already have one response. Perfect. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show it. I'm not gonna show it. I'm gonna leave you anonymous, you guys. Uh, so the first question is, how useful is this software to you? Like, do you even need it? What's the point? Like, if if you're using Selenium and you enjoy it so much, do you even need something like that? Does it answer your needs? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, how satisfied are you with the design of the software? Now, when I say design, I don't necessarily mean the logo or or any of those elements. What I actually mean is the placement of the buttons on the interface is the fact that we have this this text box box element from which we can uh, from which we can edit later on. And I'm gonna collect some other feedback from you guys in the comments here on YouTube as well. And it, and it's gonna be an open question, okay? But this is just a this is just something official for school. Um, and based on your feedback, of course, I might revise this software. My team may look at it and say, hey, you know what? These guys, they know what they're talking about, okay? So we better listen to them. So we'll see, we'll see what's going on. Uh, we'll see what will happen eventually. So uh, the design part, yeah, we finished it. Now, how effective is the software for your web scraping and automation needs? Does it solve your problem at all or is it not necessary? Um, what's your level of experience with web scraping libraries such as Selenium, Beautiful Soup, and Mechanical Soup? So, have you experienced using them? You know, do you have any experience in that? Uh, have you ever used web scraping and automation platforms such as Epify, Bright Data, or Scraping Bee? So, usually, folks that are you know data scientists or folks that are doing this for work, they don't really have the time to write Selenium scripts all the time. They use Ready tools. And those platforms that I mentioned here, you may have seen them on a channel. Um, Epify and Bright Data were sponsoring some of my videos. Scraping B, um, I spoke to the. Ooh, I spoke to them a long time ago. That's why I'm uh, using them as examples. Uh, but there's plenty of other platforms that fit those categories. So yeah, if you'll be kind enough to fill up this form and let me know uh, what do you think about the software, I'll be super super happy. This will really make my day. Whew, okay, this was a long introduction, 13 minutes of me speaking without even breathing. <laughs> Let's have a look in the comments. Yes. Okay, so what did I miss here? Okay, Nick Luz, I missed you too, guys. I, it's been so long. Honestly, it's it's been way too long. Let me enlarge my head once again. Now we can do it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, I love you, Kylie Ying. I don't know who Kylie Ying is, sorry, but she sounds like a, like a good person. I don't know. <laughs> um, and this is Tom. It's Tom's birthday. Say hi. He's sharing the same birthday as Orthodox Jesus. So it's really cool. Merry Christmas to all the Orthodox guys. Um, really impressed with your tutorial. Thank you so much, Rohit. Super happy to see it. Uh, probably the... the um, uh, the Twitter bot one, probably. That that was my most recent one. Um, hi, I am new to Python and I love your channel. Welcome! Thank you so much for joining us and best of luck on your awesome Python journey. Dobry vecher, utra. Dobry vecher, Artyom. Utra. <laughs> or afternoon. <laughs> Whichever side of the world you live in. 
Um, hello from Italy. Oh, buongiorno. Buongiorno, Rob. Uh, what else we have here? I-E-L-T-S, TOEFL, vocabulary. Wow. I actually done those exams. Those of you who are um, who study in university or in any higher education in an English-speaking country, we got to prove our abilities um, of speaking English. And I-E-L-T-S, it's the example, it's the exam that I took. I uh, didn't take the TOEFL. Um, cool. Let's see. Put a full tutorial video for Python from scratch. Mm, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I will do it one day. It's going to happen. Uh, hello from Brazil. Hello, Jefferson. Hello. Todo bem. Todo bem. Todo bem. I got to check that. My, my Portuguese is not exactly, it's not very developed. My Spanish is better, you know. Senor, donde esta la biblioteca? It's, it's a bit better. <laughs> Um, how to improve Python to advanced level. Durgesh, you got to start working on your own projects. You got to think of some kind of a software or maybe a game, um, something that you are very familiar with. You know the rules very well, like a game of X's and O's, for example, or maybe creating a calculator, which is something that all of us are quite familiar with. And then try to solve this problem step by step. Try to break it down into inside your head first, into logical stages. So for example, at first you build the user interface or at first you build the, the logic behind the application. And that way, this will improve you so much better. Now, folks, I speak as somebody who goes to university, a very, very good university, University of London. Um, I do this remotely because I live in Canada, but I study much, much better from the videos I, I film for you guys. So each tutorial I make, makes me a thousand times more smarter than any course or any any anything I've ever learned because working on those videos, it's, it's a big responsibility. You're trying to teach people all kinds of stuff and you don't want to teach them wrong things. So you end up double checking and triple checking and exploring the topic from all the points. So if you really want to do it well, if you really want to be better at something, try it, okay? Try it and, and try to do your own project from zero. Don't rely on other people, like rely on other people's code, but uh, make sure you rely on yourself more. Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy ha holidays. Anything you celebrate. Um, happy, happy, happy. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing year. I have a feeling. Are you using chat GPT to do your homework? <laughs> No, no. We did think about using it as a team. It was, it was, a, it was a joke. We were thinking um, we don't have much time to finish our midterm, and you know, one of the members suggested that uh, we should use ChatGPT. And uh, <laughs> I have a feeling it would be a masterpiece if we do it. It's just that uh, I don't know if I trust ChatGPT. You guys, I've seen so many content creators like glorifying it and saying that hey it's better than me you know i am not as good in coding as chat gpt it can definitely replace us i see those videos and i cringe to me it's scary and it's creepy and you know what we will do a chat gpt stream actually i already asked badger to help me with this one badger is a moderator on uh, on discord uh, and actually here on youtube as well i asked him to join me and unlike the other content creators who are so excited and really want to use it, we will try to break it. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're different. We're, we're different people. Um, you know, new technology, it's sometimes a good thing, but sometimes we need to treat it with some extra respect and some extra caution, right? And when it comes to AI and such a powerful AI, caution is important, okay? And definitely not saying that it's better than us programmers, because that's going to leave us without jobs, folks. We cannot say that. We thought we we're safe, right? <laughs> happy birthday, Tom. Yes, happy birthday. Uh, Franklin, he's also here. Hi, Franklin. I seen your comments. Yeah, you said Happy New Year. Okay. Ahmed, hello from Iran. Hello, hello. I love Iranian food. Love it. My favorite is tadik. I cool I cook it all the time. It's basically rice with some uh, crispy with a crispy bottom. Like it, you turn this, you make this rice in a pot and then you turn this pot upside down so your rice looks like a look like an amazing cake. And sometimes you put potatoes there and you know what? I shouldn't be talking about food. <laughs> 
Hello to Ahmed. <laughs> Hello, Mercy. <laughs> Stay home. Unfortunately, I don't have an option to leave because I work from home. Like, I can leave, but then I'm not going to get any work done. So. <laughs> I'm struggling with this working from home stuff. I don't know if you guys noticed, but it's one of the hardest things for someone like me. I'm a very social human being. I love interacting with people. I love speaking to people. And, you know, working from home for the past two years has taken its toll on me, I would say. It's very depressing. It's very lonely. And um, it, if you told me a few years ago that I'll be complaining about <laughs> the loneliness of running a YouTube channel, you know, I'd, I'd say I'm crazy. But uh, after you experience it, you realize that, hey, human connections are very important. It's not good for a human to be on its own. Lot of Adam Levado. This is this is a I think so. This this is a quote from from the Old Testament. Um, happy birthday, Tom. That's right, everyone. Say happy birthday to Tom. Tom is a moderator. To those of you who are just joining us, he's a moderator on Discord. And did I didn't turn you to a moderator on YouTube yet, so I'll do it very, very, very shortly. Um, and yes, Tom is helping all of you guys with all your questions. If you have any programming questions, if you have any errors you've encountered, please post them on Discord, and you will most likely see Tom replying uh, right away. Uh, you teach Python in a very easy way. Thank you so much, Rohit. I try. I try. That's why it's Python simplified. Otherwise, it would be Python complicated. Yeah, it would be terrible. I wouldn't click on such a channel. It sounds awful. <laughs> Love your tutorials and your colorful personality. Thank you so much. Uh, both have helped me a lot to wrap my head around programming. Great. Awesome. So we are here to support one another. Um, there's a big, big community of developers here. A lot of us have different skill sets and we come from different industries and from different uh, levels of familiarity with coding. Um, I'm kind of trying to, to build this community, uh, but there's many of us involved. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, if you have anything that, that you need help with that I don't necessarily have time to attend or I didn't notice, there's lots and lots of talented developers who can help you. You can find them on Discord. You can find them in the comments of, of certain tutorials here. Actually, a lot of the pinned comments have valuable information. So if you're ever watching a video, if you're ever encountering some kind of an error, most likely the solution is in the pinned comment, okay? Or if you're watching my unit testing tutorial, you'll, you'll know that some of it is wrong <laughs> reading the first comment. <laughs> definitely do, definitely do. Uh, Brazilian, another Brazilian. Hello, hello. Todo bem, todo bem. Do I know any music in Portuguese? No, I don't. I don't. Hello, Victor. Just go ahead. Yeah, I guess it was the, the prototype stuff. Uh, UML uh, state flows adapters. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love your channel. Thanks for doing what you do. Thank you so much. Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain. Are you from North America? Maybe from Alberta, BC? Uh, BC, uh, Alberta. Holy smokes, Alberta, Canada. Ugh. The Rocky Mountains are, are in Alberta, and I guess they're also in Montana. So and I guess they span across most of North America. So yeah, I cannot detect where you're from, judging by the name only. <laughs> but if you're from Alberta, definitely let me know. And here's Badger. Awesome. Badger is here as well. Now, I've been talking about Badger earlier. Uh, we, we've been talking about the chat GPT live stream we will have shortly. As soon as I'm done, this, this very complex midterm project, which I've asked you guys to, uh, to uh, send me feedback for. And yeah, Badger is going to be in that live stream and he's going to help me break it. I don't think he knows that we will try to break it yet, but... <laughs> There you go, Badger. <laughs> That's what we'll do. I hope you don't like ChatGPT. I hope you didn't find it interesting so far. Uh, OBS Studio is the best uh, and only streaming software. I agree. It's amazing. It's completely free. That's one of the reasons why I like it so much. And I've been using it uh, for the entire duration of my channel. Actually, at first, <laughs> at first, I wasn't using it. I was using Windows Movie Maker. And my first videos don't really have a... Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm recording my voice. You're not really seeing my face as I speak, but this is OBS Studio. You can set up a bunch of really cool filters here. Like if I go into my video right now, oh, hold on, hold on. I got to go to the filters section. You can see that I have, I've cropped, 
I've cropped the screen and I've also removed my green screen. So th this is how my, my office looks like. It's simply a very small wall. It's a tiny office with a green screen on it. So you can do this automatically from, from OBS Studio. And I didn't do anything. It's, it's doing everything for you, right? You don't need to really focus on colors. Just make sure you have a green screen and not a green blanket because a green blanket is not going to work. I tried it. Trust me. <laughs> I think it was my uh, my first neural network tutorial where I tried it. It was <laughs> I thought it was brilliant, but no, it was very low cost. Uh, greetings to you from Russia. Привет, Сергей. С Рождеством. Hello, hello. Greetings from Vancouver. I forgot to say where I'm streaming for. Yes, Vancouver, BC, beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Um, is there a prototype for smartphone? Does it function very, very well on smartphone? So the, the thing about smartphones, that I'm not sure if this software will work on smartphones. We need to test it first. Uh, we need to talk about these type of stuff because the operating system of a phone is different from the operating system of a um, computer or like a desktop device or whatever. I don't know if it, if it affects the way Chrome extensions are, are being viewed. Uh, but it definitely affects the orientation, right? Because because you gotta flip uh, the screen in a vertical way. So not sure, not sure. For now, there is no prototype for a smartphone. This is only something that's meant for desktops. Um, but yeah, thanks for letting me know. I might design one. You know what? This this could be one piece of feedback. Actually, I forgot to ask you guys. I had another question. I had another question that. Uh, Hold on, I'm going to turn off this comment. I had another question that I forgot to ask you, and I think uh, somebody's about to start vacuuming um, outside of my door. So I apologize if you hear any any noise or cleaner. This this is the day she uh, she cleans the the carpets. So my question to you is okay, and this is an open question. Please feel free to say whatever you'd like. I'm going to show you the prototype once again very quickly without talking about it too much. Uh, for those of you who just joined us, the question is: If you could change one thing in this prototype. What would you change? And when you write your comment, please use three alien emojis in front of it so I can detect it in the crowd. You see there's lots and lots of comments. I'm trying to answer all of them, and it's going to take me some time to get there. So um, this will really make your comment pop. So if there is one thing you could change, what would it be? And I'm going back to the prototype. Let's, uh, let's start all over again. Ah, and of course, of course, I need to make myself smaller again. <sighs> Maria, there's actually is, by the way, the, the whole thing about uh, OBS Studio, which is something I'm not utilizing, it allows you to have hotkeys. So for example, instead of me resizing physically uh, the size of my image, I could have pressed on H and or any other key. And this would have showed you a different, um, a different setup of the interface. You know, it will made, make my head smaller automatically, but it's something you need to program in advance and I've never done it. Uh, I should, I should be doing it. So there you go, this is the prototype. We press on this A, uh, sorry, on the icon of our extension and boom, there you go. Here's our auto automator extension popping up. Now we can press on the load URL button and we can uh, load a ready script. This could be a GitHub file, a JSON, a text file, whatever your heart desires, as long as it contains an actual automation um, of this browser window. Now, if you don't have a file to load, you press on the record button, and then you can press on a bunch of elements on the page. So for example, if we press on this input field, voila, we can see the code associated with a click on the input field right inside the text box. If we click on another element, we then see the code of another element and so on and so on until we press stop and our recording stops. Then we can go ahead and edit this text box. We can convert, um, we can convert interactions with single elements into interactions with multiple elements, um, multiple elements of the same kind on the page, and we can do this manually, okay? Um, so yeah, and then we can play this. Uh, we can press on the play button, which is something I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, done yet. I might be able to do it. No, no, I think it's too complex. I'm gonna leave it as is. Um, you press on the play button and then your automation happens within your browser window. And then it is much harder to detect you as a bot, by the way, you know. Uh, so, something's going on here. I'm, I'm just going to leave. Oh, oh, somebody is using it. One of you guys is using it. 
Wow, this is exciting. So by the way, guys, if you never heard of Figma, it's all good because I never heard of Figma either. Just one of the team members suggested it and then I've discovered that other team members know all about it. So like I have to learn it too. This is exciting. So I am learning it as we go. It's really, really cool that you guys can control it on your end. It's very exciting, folks. Okay. Okay, so let me go back to the stream. You guys keep playing around with it. I do need your feedback. Um, I have this form that I've also attached in the description. If you could please answer it, that would mean a lot to me. It's only five questions. It's only, and please reflect your actual opinions. Don't, don't try not to offend me. Please offend me. I would love you to be truthful. I want only the truth. The truth and nothing but the truth, okay? Be honest with me. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Please let me know. And leave me a comment of what would you change if you could. One thing you would change. Whew. Again, another long sentence with not much breathing room. Okay. <laughs> Back to your comment, folks. Back to your comments. Oh, thank you so much, your girl. Thank you for the... You guys are super generous. Thank you so much. Um, I really, ha I'm so happy you enjoy my tutorials. Thank you for sending me, for, for sending me all those awesome encouragements. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I, I really appreciate your support. Uh, Tobbs, I don't know if you were here earlier, but thank you so much for the coffee. Thank you guys. I, I really appreciate it. It's, it's not necessary, but very appreciated folks. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, that's what I use for my Badger stuff. I've seen this comment before. Okay, what, what I didn't see. Where did I stop? Okay. Ruben is saying, hi, Maria. I hope you are doing great. I hope so too. <laughs> I'm very stressed because I got to submit in three days a big midterm project. And I'm always stressed when it comes to school. And there's a bunch of stuff going on in Canada that are very di directly related to Python Simplified that are very scary at the moment. So... Lots of stress, but that's okay. I'll survive. Don't worry, guys. I have you guys to help me. Yeah, some mental support. Definitely need it. Um, I thought sea lion. I bought a sea lion today. It's a JetBrains ID for sea. Like Tobbs, I thought you bought an actual sea lion, like the creature. Wow. <laughs> JetBrains IDE for C. It's right. Sounds like it's gonna be much better than Visual Studio, if you ask me. JetBrains are. I I generally really like the products. They're doing some good job. Uh, WebStorm, I believe I used a lot. WebStorm. Yeah, it's a Jet, JetBrains one. Um, cool. Have fun. Let me know how it works. If you like it, give me give me a nice review. Um, we have also used Figma for university this year. Usability engineering. That's awesome. That I really like this, this software. It, basically, when you usually see prototypes, um, they're not interactive at all. But Figma allows you to add interactivity to your static drawing. So, so then you can actually, this presentation we had here, this is not something we could have done in, in, you know, with different software. It's, it's awesome that we have this extra level of, uh, of interactivity. And in addition, you can do some really cool flow charts with, uh, with Figma. Some very interesting stuff. Um, it, it's great if you're working in a team on a piece of code or on a piece of software. It's very organized. Um, I do like it. And it's for free. There's a free tier. You can pay for it or you can use it for free. Guess what I'm using? <laughs> I'm Jewish, you know. <laughs> I like good value, okay? Uh, JetBrains has amazing IDEs. That's right. You know, Badger and I have very similar opinions on a lot of stuff. So that, that's why we get along so well. <laughs> and hello to everybody. Happy New Year to y'all. Happy New Year, Robin and, and ha Ruben. And happy Merry Christmas to the Orthodox, to all the folks that are Slavic and uh, Greeks. You know, we have a different Christmas. My neighbors are probably confused as to why we, we still have a Christmas tree. <laughs> going on in the living room a lot of a lot of folks already removed their christmas decorations but you know what not everybody celebrated christmas yet so patience plus it's so pretty and my cat loves this tree so what, what are you gonna do you gotta keep it um last 12 months they have saved my life so many times so that's that's about jet brains okay we love jet brains on this channel uh so sorry guys so once in a while i i just i turn to different languages um if you ask me a question in language that i can understand i will answer in the same language um 
<laughs> Unless I can't understand it, and then I'll try. I'll I'll sound very illiterate. <laughs> um, hi, where are you from? I am from Vancouver, Canada, British Columbia. Ooh, North America. Yes, Earth. <laughs> awesome, Chirgal. Thank you once again. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I started watching this channel for the makeup tips. <laughs> Don't listen to Tobbs. He's he's joking. <laughs> I've written to YouTube to complain about <laughs> computing content, but they never reply. <laughs> okay, okay. If, if you see funny comments, many of them come from Tobbs. I think I I think you need to explore the the possibilities of of you know making some some stand up comedy or or something along these lines. It's it's really I think that. A lot of us are missing good humor. I think that that's one of the reasons why uh, a lot of us are sad and upset very lately. That uh, we deal with a lot of political stuff. We we read a lot of political comments and ideological comments, and we forget that you know we need to laugh once in a while. You know, and and we need people who can do it well. If I try to tell a joke, you guys will cry. It's so terrible. It, the only times I'm funny is when I'm not trying. If I'm trying to be funny. You will not watch this channel. <laughs> so thank you for the awesome, awesome jokes, Tobbs. Please continue. Please continue. <laughs> uh, user experience and UI. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. This has good UX and UI. Simple is better. Awesome. Thank you so much. Perfect. Perfect. Hello, Gladren. Good to see you here. Hi. I filled the form. Thank you so much, Peter. I really, really appreciate it. I love it. Now, this idea is a team idea. It's not just myself involved. It's a bunch of other really cool folks. So just keep that in mind. It's it's a, it's a collaboration type of a thing. Um, even though I'm the one that's presenting it, there's more people involved. Um, cool. I just joined. What did I miss? Preslav, I think I've briefed you since you wrote this comment. It happened... Uh, yeah, it happened about 15 minutes ago and I showed you the presentation. So uh, we can probably move on. If not, go back to the beginning of the stream uh, where I'm talking about it. Use channel is best and I got luck to learn. Awesome. Super happy to hear it. Thank you so much. I think I need some coffee. My, uh, my voice disappears. Sorry, guys. Just a little bit. Mm. Amazing. By the way, this is Tim Horton's coffee. We call it Timmy's. It's a Canadian... Uh, type of a Starbucks slash McDonald's type of a type of a business. They have amazing coffee. We love it here. Okay. Hello from Michigan. Hello, Andrew, my neighbor from North America. Hello, hello. Uh, Utkash, I totally agree. Simple UI is so much better. I also agree with you guys. It's the simpler, the better. That's for sure. No complexities. Just, I've seen a lot of, you know, part of this project is looking at a lot of um, a lot of existing software, you know, and, and a lot of these software, especially those that are um, Chrome extensions, they are designed for people who are not familiar with coding. So everything is, is placed in options, you know, everything is in options, everything is need to, need to be done manually. I cannot function with those type of interfaces. Um, I would have shown you an example, but I have it installed on another computer of mine. Um, I haven't been using this computer uh, lately. I went to the living room and I've been doing all those stuff there. Um, hello from Alaska. Hello, Jason. He is, this This is way northern, more in the north than me, which is very rare to see, you know? Even though right now I'm in Vancouver, it would have been a bigger challenge when I lived in Edmonton, which is quite more in the north but hello hello i i bet you you guys have lots of snow we have nothing it, it all melted unfortunately hello from a czech republic yaroslav you know i've been to czech republic i've been to brno i think i think this is how you pronounce it loved it it's a really nice city remember it it was really cool hello from ksa what is ksa i'm not sure what ksa is ksa let's see is it, is it something I can Google? Let's see. KSA. The place. Saudi Arabia. Hello, hello. Ahalan wa sahalan, ya habibi. Hello, hello. Kif halak. Ah, you know, I know a bit of Arabic. A little bit. 
Hello from Bulgaria. Here's another language I know a little bit. Um, oh, I know the curses. I know the curses. What do I? My spouse is from Bulgaria. Um, his name is Mario, but he's not Italian. He's uh, he's Bulgarian. So um, uh, Costa Peach, Costa. Huh? See, see, international. We're very international. Hello from Germany. Guten Gute Nacht. Gute Nacht. Uh, ich bin 25 Jahre alt, even though I'm not. But <laughs> I know some German too. Uh, mostly Rammstein stuff. So Rammstein, but. I know other German. <laughs> um, I've been to Germany many times, by the way. Uh, mostly in Munich. I've been in Munich a bit, I believe, three times in different vacations. So, so a lot, a lot. Hello from Firenze. Oh, hello. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Grazie. Um, civilization is speaking. Greetings from France. Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, Slightly, slightly French, because in Canada, you know, French is our second language. It's really, really cool. Um, and since it's our second language, a lot of our food uh, comes with a French label. So I can speak fluent French when it comes to food, when it's jambon, when it's poulette. <laughs> I can find my way there. I've also been to France, but uh, only twice. Yes. Um Currently making massive progress in learning Python. Thanks to your channel. Thanks to your awesome content. Thank you so much, Gary Goldfish. Thank you. I, I love the name, Gary Goldfish. Wow, you guys, you have so many other comments here. <gasps> Holy smokes. Okay, let me, let's see the super chats. Thank you so much, Daniel. I am originally from Crimea. I grew up in the Middle East, and I, when I was old enough, I moved to Canada on my own, where I met my amazing, amazing spouse, and ever since we live in Canada, it's been almost a decade. In fact, in fact, when I first came to Canada, it was December 28, 2013. Yes, 2013. This was the year, so definitely a decade. Celebrated a decade here. And I've seen some other super chats. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Oh, my God. I didn't expect all of it. Thank you so much, Sergio. Thanks, Sergio. Thanks for the content that you share. It's very useful. Coffee time. Thank you so much. Yes, coffee time. Cheers. Cheers, folks. I really appreciate it. I did not expect. Wow. Chirgal, another one. Thank you so much. With the help of your tutorials, I got a 1,000 a month Python job. I saw all your videos and watching you live for the first time. Dear girl, thank you so much. I'm so happy it helped you to find a job. Wow. Wow, you guys. I, I'm so happy to see all of it. That's why I do it. That's why I'm here. That's why I work so hard on this channel. I want to help. You know what? When I started this channel, I was actually looking for a job. I was hoping that some employer will look at my presentational skills and be very impressed. And maybe, just maybe, give me a chance, an opportunity to join their company. So I was I was in a place of just please take me anywhere. Because it was right the beginning of the of this. Am I allowed to say pandemic? Am I allowed to say this word? I don't know. Am I allowed to say it on YouTube without getting, you know? <laughs> erased but when it was the beginning this is where i was looking for my first high-tech job and nobody was hiring junior developers i was in a deep deep pile of manure <laughs> you could say it um and i couldn't find an employer that would even look at my resume you know left alone hire me so that's why i started the channel and as it grew as it grew i've noticed so many people in the same situation and we kind of started helping each other and i i see all your comments, you know, and, and I really enjoy seeing those comments saying, I found a job right now and I'm doing what I like to do and I'm being compensated properly for it. This is what we're doing here in programming. I don't think any of us would have learned it if we didn't want to have a career in this. You know, it's a very, um, I think it's a very rewarding field. And unless we let chat GPT take over it, it will continue to be a very rewarding field. Let's make sure it happens. So Let's try to destroy ChatGPT. Let's try to break it. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, what did I, I didn't see? Um, I've seen this comment. Yes, we have folks from Norway here. Vikings, nice, nice. Um, 
Hi from Germany. Uh, please, I want the extension. Said, I promise when it's ready, I will send it over to you. So the whole point of this midterm uh, project that we're working on is just the, pro the proposal of our software. We're not actually writing the software, but we're designing it, we're planning it, we're making sure that before we start building it, we have a well-defined plan. Because when you work in a team, you need to have this plan. Otherwise, everyone just goes rogue. You know, it's, it's, hard, to, uh, it's hard to coordinate that way. Ah, and we have KiwiMD joining our stream, folks. KiwiMD is here. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Super happy to see you here. Um, I need to do another KiwiMD tutorial sometime soon, sometimes. Because let's let's face it, KiwiMD is better than Kiwi. It's just way more convenient and everything is just, oh, it's you're doing an awesome job. Keep doing what you're doing. It's great. Um, uh, really, really? <laughs> Hello from India. Namaste. Namaste. That's one of the only Indian, uh, the words in Indian I know. My dad is about to visit India very soon. Uh, it's going to be very fun to see him do so because he's a, he never visited, <laughs> you know, this side of the world. He's never been there. He never tasted Indian food. I can't wait for him to taste butter chicken. I've been telling my parents, you know what, you have to taste it. You have to taste it. But in fact, a lot of the Indian food I eat is, is very, very good. Not just butter chicken. It's just that butter chicken is... Ugh, I can't even explain it. It's... Ooh. Every time I talk about food, I get excited. Maybe I should start a food channel. <laughs> I cook a lot, okay? Um, hello, I'm from Bangladesh. Hello, Dr. Python. Nice, nice uh, nickname. Uh, really good job. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, Lord, we all have flashbacks to college programming. <laughs> making calculators in every language yeah i guess this is how you start right so it looks like the comments are from centuries ago you guys uh no i am not from quebec i'm not french canadian even though my accent is very confusing a lot of people think i'm french canadian and they call me marie they don't call me maria they call me marie i love it i love this name it's really cool i haven't been to quebec even i really hope to visit one day your microphone and background is super cool. Thank you so much. My microphone is HyperX. Um, it's a HyperX microphone. It's entirely RGB. You can play with the colors. You can play with the mo moods, uh, with everything. My background is a Rogue Aura. Um, Rogue Aura wallpaper, I think. It's just an animated piece of uh, wallpaper. You just get this software arm that's called Armory Crate. Um, and yeah, I think you can access it too, even if you don't have a rogue machine, um, Republic of Gamers machine. Um, I created a B deflection calculator for math, mechanical engineers using Python and a dash. Wow. Well, that's way more complicated than a regular calculator for sure. Like it's, it's definitely not the first project you should attempt if you're just beginning your journey folks, but it's a really, really nice project. It sounds super useful. Uh, my dad is a mechanical engineer, so he would probably appreciate this one. Uh, it just it can't be in English because I don't know if he speaks it very well. <laughs> well, he does. He reads English and he understands English. Maybe he just doesn't speak it uh, too much. Uh, love to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Kamuel. Uh, you are teaching a Pi QT5. I have a bunch of tutorials on it, Daniel. If you didn't have a chance to, to see them, let me navigate uh, to my youtube channel sorry guys let me navigate to huh, let me do it that way i'm gonna navigate through here so you don't see my studio i'm not supposed to show you the studio but it's a good way for me to navigate through the videos of the channel so i'm just gonna go to content perfect and this one you are i guess allowed to see hold on verify it's you proceed Ah, he wants me to log in. Never mind. I'm not going to show you this playlist of videos, but I do have a PyQt5 video. Okay. Sorry, I've been interacting with YouTube all this time. I didn't see <laughs> anything on the screen. Okay. I start a new job on Monday. Congrats, Tobbs. Remote work and the parent company is from Canada. <gasps> nice. Nice. So you are basically working in Canada. Well, I guess. Well, employed by a Canadian employer in the end of the day. That's awesome, Tobbs. It's one another step towards moving to Canada altogether. I don't know if I recommend it under the current government, but it's it's awesome. Like Canada, 
it's one of the nicest places on earth like it used to be and uh hopefully it will be very soon it's just uh right now right now it's difficult times but yeah i've changed the banner and i'm back to the comments now folks um since we have so many comments that were written like hours after this one i'm just gonna go to the very bottom gonna go to the bottom and i'm gonna start from there sorry if i missed your comments there's just so many of them and i don't know if the folks that commented are still in the stream so <laughs> just moved elsewhere hello from mexico hello hello jose uh, hola mm. <laughs> it's it's a it's a spanish word yeah i i know better spanish i uh, just not allowed to sing uh copyrighted materials in the in the stream um but yeah i love gypsy kings i love uh music in Spanish for sure. Happy New Year. Can you also make series on reinforcement learning? Would love to learn it simplified. Thank you. <sighs> I have a love and hate relationship with reinforcement learning. I haven't uh, I haven't had a chance to try it. And the reason why I haven't had a chance to try it is because I'm I'm scared of it a bit. A bit, you know, it's a uh, it's the type of machine learning um practice artificial intelligence uh how do you how do you call it a paradigm of artificial intelligence that um that that basically allows a bit more freedom to the the model you are building that i'm comfortable with so usually when you're dealing with with you know um, supervised learning and unsupervised learning you are basically showing a ready database of let's say images to your neural network and each of those images is labeled or maybe unlabeled and yet you are in charge of all the data that your model is exposed to. When it comes to reinforcement learning, you just leave it on its own. <laughs> you give it a system of rewards and penalties and you let it learn everything about the world by itself. And this is a bit scary. It's a bit scary. I might be paranoid and I might try it one day, but for now, I'm keeping it on a back burner, okay? For now, just for now. Wow, so many comments since I read this one. You guys are so fast. <gasps> I, I appreciate it. <laughs> I just don't know how I can answer in all of this. Holy smokes. Norman, hi, mom. I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, there was a joke many, many streams ago that, that a bunch of folks started calling me mom. Norman is one of them. <laughs> and it's been going on ever since. Awesome. I appreciate it. Hello, son. <laughs> I have a degree in linguistics. I applied to a job that was like made to me. They didn't even invite me to an interview. It tells me that small people hire small people. I think when it comes to, to jobs and hiring, the best way, the best way to deal with this is to see exactly the requirements of the job, you know, see exactly what they want and base your entire resume on it, okay? You don't have a single resume that you send to different companies. You adjust your resume each time. Now, when it comes to, uh, it's tough, it's tough. It's been a while since, I've been, since I looked for a job. Uh, it's a tough market nowadays. Everybody expects you to have not only a degree, but you need to have some kind of a list of, of acknowledgements. And, you know, they, they want you to present some crazy experience for a uh, for an entry level job, which which the basis of it is no experience at all. I've seen some horrible things on, on LinkedIn. Um, the job market is in a deep, deep, uh, deep hole since. Uh, since 2019, I would say. Uh, but again, it depends on the field. I think that uh, in high tech, we didn't get hurt as much as other fields. So at least that, at least it's something. Um, but yeah, maybe if, if Mika, if you're trying to apply for, for some uh, development jobs, take a look in your GitHub. Make sure you have GitHub, GitHub contributions or maybe try contributing to some kind of a open source library. Make sure you you add a piece of code or, or something that the employer will see and like, oh, Okay, okay, I like it. I'm not sure. It's hard for me to give tips on job searching because I was not successful with that. <laughs> and I had a we had a stream with uh, Geeks for Geeks, which was very very interesting. Um, I invited Prakash, and he was talking about about uh, the process of hiring. He was sharing a bunch of tips. If you want, definitely check it out. It's in the live streams on my channel. There's a playlist uh, with all the live streams. He's sharing lots of tips there. He knows better than me because. <laughs> If you watch this stream, you will see exactly all the mistakes I've made. Um, so, so, yeah. Uh, how to create chat GPT-like stuff. So, Arvind, um, chat GPT is 
based on many, many different components. It's not just a single neural network that you train and you to do a single thing, right? Because usually when we make um, an artificial intelligence model, it is an expert in a very, very narrow field. So for example, we can design a model that distinguishes between cats and dogs. But once you show it a donkey, it's going to freak out. It's like what? It, it has to be either a cat or a dog. But what is this weird nose that I'm seeing? Well, it's probably a dog. So it's, it, it's a very long process. It consists of a bunch of neural networks. And it consists of mostly, I believe, language processing uh, type of algorithms, um, semantics, um, sentiment analysis, natural language processing. So there's a lot of components. And it's not something that I've explored enough to um, to delegate, <laughs> to talk about. Because what we will have a really nice stream about it. I've, I've invited Badger. He's going to help me out. Um, I don't know when it's going to happen, but definitely in uh, at least three more days because I'm working on my university stuff in the meanwhile. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's we we'll definitely talk about it for sure. I uh, PyCutify has paid license for commercial use. That's right. If you are making a software that you would like to, um, you would like to charge people for, like you would like to people to pay money in order to use it, you need to talk to PyCutify. You need to obtain a proper license. Like you cannot just just do it the same as you would do for your personal project. So yeah, you're allowed to make personal projects with it. You're allowed to distribute it for free uh, for educational purposes. But as soon as you're trying to make some income out of it, you're kind of limited. So be careful if you're using PyCutify for that. Uh, hello from uh, Germany. Hello, uh, wie get es dir? Wie geht's? Uh, love uh, the Tom and Jerry. Thank you so much. I love the upside down text. How did you get it done? Looks interesting. Um, Yes, reinforcement learning is also quite complicated, but I guess everything that has to do with artificial intelligence and machine learning is, is kind of complicated. Um, it's it's the type of field that uh, once you break it down into single components, then yeah, it's 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 not so complicated. But there's so many components, and they need to work perfectly with other components, and that's what makes it a bit more uh, challenging. Happy New Year from Colombia. Happy New Year, Alfonso. Feliz Navidad. Is it Christmas? No, I think it's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's still Christmas. Uh, can the second uh, coolest place on earth uh, is after Russian? <laughs> Canada, I guess. Well, I don't know if Canada is the same Canada you guys remember. <laughs> it's not the same Canada I remember, and I lived here for 10 years. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. let's not get into it. <laughs> Let's not get into it. Forget about it. Let's do some interesting stuff. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Okay. Preslav. I started learning C Sharp when I was 11. <gasps> Sooner than I started learning programming. That's your, you're one year faster than me. Uh, the C++ and now being 15. 15. Nice. Um, all... I'm learning Python. I have some troubles with the syntax. It's a lot different. Can you give me some advice on learning Python? So, Preslav, let me let me tell you something interesting. While you are struggling with Python, you cannot imagine how many people are struggling with C++ and C sharp. For me, I knew Python before I knew C++. And to me, this conversion into this very very precise and, and very demanding language was very difficult because in Python, we don't really need to declare a data type. If something is a string, we can easily convert it into an integer. We can easily convert it into a Boolean or whatever we'd like without too much hassle. In C++, if you've created a variable that you specified is a string, it must always remain a string. You cannot just simply convert it. You know, it, it, it there, there's a process involved there. Now with C++, you need to be very specific as though how many bits you would like to reserve in memory and you need to be extra precise when you're writing your code. With Python, the beauty of it is that you don't need to be precise at all. And I think that this is where a lot of the problems happen. Now, if you started coding when you were 11, I don't know if you had a lot of time um, experimenting with syntax, because a lot of what we do, no matter which programming language we use, is indentations. It helps us organize the code. So we use a tab character 
in order to create distinct um, sections within our code. We are basically arranging it, it so it's easier for us to understand. And we do it all the time. When I was younger, I didn't do it. I didn't care about it um, because I wasn't really looking in my in my code very often. I wasn't working in a team and nobody else was reviewing my code. So I didn't care about the indentations. Now, Python forces you to have those indentations. So if you're not generally very experienced with programming, this may present a bit of a uh, a bit of an issue. Best tip with learning Python. Um, let me think of it. Let me think. Preslav, there's actually there's actually some Python libraries that are very precise. If you look at NumPy, for example, you can specify the data type um, of each each entity. Basically, you can even go down to the de details of like how many bits it res reserves in uh, memory. So there are certain Python libraries that are entirely based on C. So the commands you give, yeah, they're in Python, but it's implemented with a C language, which is a bit more restrictive. You can look at those libraries. It's NumPy, it's Pandas, it's OpenCV, and there's a bunch of other libraries, actually. If you write C Python library, you will find a very large collections of, of, of libraries that I believe you can even access their source code, their source code, and take a look at how the C commands look like. But yeah, um, it, you learn something, better, you remember something better once you try it. And if you try it the first time and it didn't work, it doesn't mean anything. Keep trying. Keep trying until you're successful. That, that's, that's how we roll. And if you spent a very good amount of time on it and you're still unsuccessful, maybe then think about giving up. But at least give it, give it a go. Give it a nice go. Um, and if learning from one place doesn't help, Try another place. You know, there's all kinds of cool academies out there. There's Udemy, there's Udacity, there's Coursera, there's IDX, and all of them have free introduction to Python courses, okay? So you don't have to pay for those courses. Just just either get a free trial or, you know, or just get a free course. <laughs> either either or is an option. Old man, Masha Privet. Privet, old man. Uh, by the way, Masha is, is the shorter version of Maria. So if you see me, people call me Masha, it's still it's still fine. That, that's my name, indeed. Uh, coffee in a glass. That's right. So I have a very fancy glass. I don't know if you've noticed. It's a double pane glass. You can put uh, hot, hot drinks, cold drinks in it, whatever you'd like. It's really, really cool. Uh, I believe this one's from Costco, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what? The joke about mom. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's just that a bunch of folks started uh, calling me mom many, many streams ago. I think it was one of the first streams and it kind of, and it, it was caught. And every time that Norman is joining the streams, it's like, mom, what's up, mom? You know, maybe, maybe it has to do with like mother of pythons or something. There was, I, I think, you know, when Game of Thrones was on, folks were saying like, hey, you're a bit like mother of dragons. And I'm like, yeah, mother of pythons. Maybe I don't remember at all. I just, I have no reason to be called a mom by anyone, <laughs> you know, un unless it's my cat. My cat can call me mom. I, I agree. <laughs> um, one small tip from the Python is very sensitive to indentation. That's right. See, great mind, minds think alike. Make sure you use indentation properly, for sure, for sure. Always, o regardless if it's Python or not, it's very, it's much more organized. You're going to thank me later. doesn't matter which programming language you use. Use indentations. It, it will save you lots of time. Um, Python. <laughs> the real Python. Oh, no. I hope you I hope you feel well, Nikhil. I really hope so, because Python sounds venomous. Um, or no, are, are they strangling? Yeah, I think I think Pythons are more in the strangling categories, the, the snakes. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, uh, use space or tab can improve performance. Hmm. It, it doesn't matter. Four four spaces is one tab. Sometimes two spaces in one is one tab. I don't know if it matters. It it depends on you and how you like it. I like it when there's four tabs. Like I like it when there's four spaces in my tab. Um, but I've seen some work from my university with two spaces. Sorry, guys. Holy smokes. With two spaces, it's coffee time. See, and you can turn off your, your microphone. One good feature, you can turn it off. 
as you speak, just simply by tabbing it. Um, yeah, uh, Mika, was it about reinforcement learning? Um, I'm not sure. Not sure where uh, where you commented on. Um, I just watched your ah, it's about the okay, Mika. I know it's about the the employment stuff. Um, I just watched your Django video and I really liked it. Have you tried Fast API? If so, what are your thoughts on it? Greetings from Colombia. I haven't tried Fast API. I, I've only tried Django. I was actually about to post a really nice project of hosting it. Like I have an app, a chat app, which I built and it's really cool and it's really beautiful. I just cannot find, I cannot host it. And I tried it for so long and I am just, I, I, I was so tired. I, I couldn't continue it. I had to move on with some other tutorials, but uh yeah, I love Django, but yeah, I'll definitely try the the fast fast API. I'll I'll take a look. I am generally not working with too many APIs, but I should I should start doing this. Uh, thank you for your advice. Thank you, Mika. I hope it helped in a way. <laughs> you know, just remember, I am unemployed. <laughs> I'm giving you advice as, as an unemployed individual, <laughs> like a self-employed. I guess uh, unemployed is not a good not not a good description. Um, learning from different data structures in python lists tuples dictionary data frames pandas series and numpy arrays i think that c plus plus has a good variety of data structures too and some of them are are equivalent to python it's just that uh, arrays for example it's it's a data structure that c most is is using more than uh, python but lists it's something that C++ or C or any C language will never have because you can combine multiple data types in the same in the same, you know, array or or list or whatever it is. So it's just not something that a low level language will ever have. That that's the beauty of Python. You don't have to be specific. You can combine data from all kinds, even though it is not recommended. But you still can do it, uh, which is the beauty of Python. I love your videos. Learning a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard. Hello. Good to see you. It's been a while. How come you don't ask me what's for dinner? Or or maybe you asked me above. <laughs> I'll check. I'll check later on. Uh, wonderful and smart. Thank you so much. I hope you're talking about me. I don't know. Because <laughs> you may be talking about somebody else and I'm taking a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, nice Tom and Jerry shirt. Is that pajama? Clay, this is, believe it or not, but this is not a pajama. This is this is an actual shirt I, I bought online, especially for uh for the channel because I don't have many t-shirts and I think that for the channel folks really enjoy t-shirts um it's not distracting <laughs> and it's 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 much more professional than you know tank tops and stuff like that so I bought a whole collection of t-shirts I have um I have Lilo and Stitch uh t-shirts I had Harry Potter one which I which I gave away already I have uh, Powerpuff Girls right I have all those uh cartoons from childhood um, now it's a good idea to build a bunch of programs like a portfolio and put them on github nick a better idea is to put all your programs on github as soon as you make them especially if you can make your commits on github as well so if you start from a skeleton of a program if you know you, you finish programming for the day i would still upload it to github and then the next day when i'll do some more work i will upload you know upload it to GitHub once again until the software is complete. And then whoever wants to see the progress behind your software, they can see it. That's the beauty of GitHub. Each of our commits is being shown there. Um, and this is this is this is a probably better course of action than preparing a bunch of projects and only then loading them. Because the whole point about GitHub, let me show you the let me show you the thing. Let, let me show it to you because GitHub can show you github.com slash Maria Shah. There you go. So the thing about GitHub, the most important thing that my head blocks, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make myself a bit smaller. Okay, this is a very important thing because it shows the, the extent of your contribution, the extent of your interactivity, like of you interacting with GitHub. Every time you upload something, all those those gray uh, boxes turn into a colorful box. Now, if you've committed a lot of things in the same day, you're gonna have a light green color. But if you commit a bit less, you're still gonna have some tiny green color. So the more green, the the less gray circles you circle. The gray, uh, 
the last gray <laughs> squares. I forgot to say square, you guys. The less gray squares you have here, the better. Okay, now on my end, you know, I upload stuff only when, when you know it's necessary, when I'm filming a new video or something like that. But this section is very important. I think employers will look at that. So if you're planning, a, you know, this GitHub thing, uh, do something every day. Make sure you're filling this with with some colorful squares because this this can can mean a lot. Like another thing you can do in uh, in in on GitHub if you'd like to be a bit more present, if you're building like a portfolio for to find a job, contribute to some kind of an open source project. Please do um, find some piece of software that you're using and you would like to improve and maybe suggest an improvement there. Um, make sure you are being listed as one of the contributors, and this will give you a bit more. Uh, a bit more track traffic. Uh, uh, this will give you a bit more reliability from employers, I would say. Um, in addition, if you have some some of your code is able to attract a lot of uh, stars and and it has lots of forks. So forks is that thing over here. This is just stars, people who are uh, following this repository. Um, if you are able to attract many many people, like I'm talking about hundreds, not like twelve or or fifty or something. As long as it's in the hundreds you will most likely find an employer that will take you right away. Because this is all the evidence of, of your knowledge of coding, of your knowledge of Python, of your professionalism can be found within your GitHub. So definitely work on your GitHub. If you're looking for a job in high tech, it's a good, good platform to, to present uh, your work. ChatGPT did all my assignments. <laughs> Just the cherry on top, my dear. We cannot let it take over us. We we are way better than it. We we cannot allow it to do what we are usually doing. I I refuse. Let's refuse it together. <laughs> I know it's hard to resist, but some things are just too scary. Too scary to me. It's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm paranoid. It could be. Uh, what is the best way to first job with Python? Oh, uh, okay. Jefferson, I have an amazing, okay, I'm going to go into regular YouTube. So I don't really, just going to find my channel here. And I'm going to show you this live stream with Ge Geeks for Geeks I've been talking about. So Python uh, Simplified. I always misspell simplified to simplified, sif something like that. I'm always upset. Okay, there you go. So this is the channel. And if you go to the live section, you can find a bunch of live streams here. Uh, yeah, you can see it here. And this is the, the tech, tech jobs. Are you ready to apply for tech jobs uh, stream I was talking about? Prakash is from Geeks for Geeks. He's I, hiring people. He's Whenever they assemble a new team, like he, he looks at their resumes. He's actually part of the process. So the advices he will give you are a thousand times better than the advices that somebody like myself can give you. I'm self-employed. So, oh, Ash looks like he's online. Ash is an amazing, amazing musician. I really like his stuff. Uh, but yeah, cool. So, so that, 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 there was that. <laughs> Let me move the microphone back. Okay, so ChatGPT is based on generative adversarial network. It is generator function and discriminator function. Mm. It's like more detailed uh, AI stuff. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat, Jason. That's awesome. I really appreciate it. Hello, I started learning Python four months ago, and it blew my head off in a good way or in a bad way. <laughs> for me, it happened in a good way. Uh, discovered your channel and it helped a lot. Thank you. I love what you do. Thank you so much, Jason. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for, for contributing. I promise I will take all your super chats and I will invest in some good stuff for the channel. Uh, probably not new computer equipment because I have way too much. It's an addiction. I need to stop. Actually, one of the reasons I haven't been using my computer uh, lately is because uh, I, I had to install like I found a new NVMe drive, you know, and it was in, in a very good price. It was four terabytes, you know, it was very, very fast, this NVMe. So we had to buy it. So I had to reinstall Windows once again and I had to move everything. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, I haven't been in this workstation in a while. Uh, everything is new. Um, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you so much to all the guys who who previously I've I've mentioned in the super chats. This is this is awesome. This is great. 
Um, Nick, hey, I know what a generator is. Great, great. Actually, I promised a generator tutorial. Hello from Morocco. Hamza, hello, hello. Kapara, what do I know in Moroccan? Well, I know food stuff, you know, mostly sphinx, you know, <laughs> kube. <laughs> I know these type of stuff. You know, I, I cook a lot of Moroccan food, uh, for sure. Moroccan fish, one of my favorites. Uh, it sounds a good idea. Cool. Let's see. Where are you from? So, folks, I am from Vancouver, British Columbia. Like, I live in Vancouver, British Columbia. I am originally from Eastern Europe. I grew up in the Middle East. So it, it, it depends at which point of time, you know, you have to be specific with me. I've lived in many, many places. Um, hello from Germany. Wie get es dir? Guten Tag. Guten Nacht. Guten Nacht. Uh, is Python good for coding home AI systems? Yeah, probably. For example, somewhat like an intruder alert system or asking your program for news on, on the weather or similar. Absolutely. You know what? In the end of the day, I think many programming languages are suitable for that. But every time that it comes to AI, every time that you hear the word AI, I think people are automatically switching into Python. Let me enlarge myself a bit because I think my head is kind of smaller. Half of my face is blocked by the comments, so <laughs> this is probably a bit better. Um, but yeah, anything that has to do with AI, the reason why Python is is so so good for it is because AI generally is quite complex. Okay, and when you're using a high level language such as Python, that doesn't force you to be specific. You can be very ambiguous with Python. You know, you have a little bit more slack. Like you'll get less errors most likely. And some of the AI libraries that Python has to offer are beyond anything that any other language can offer. It's so intuitive. It's like it, it's like plain English. If you're curious about those type of libraries, check out PyTorch. I have a bunch of videos on PyTorch. I use it all the time. It's my favorite. But um, in addition to PyTorch, there is also a library called framework, not a library. What am I talking about? It's a full framework. It's not just a library. It is called TensorFlow. This one is made by Google and PyTorch is made by Facebook. TensorFlow has a bit of a bigger learning curve, but I've heard actually from, from John Cron, he has a really nice podcast that I was interviewing on a month ago. He was telling me that, that basically, uh, I'll, I'll send you this link very soon. If you want, just check out uh, right now, check out uh, Super Data Science Podcast. It has like an hour and 40 worth of an interview with myself regarding uh, machine learning. And in, in most cases, machine learning, Python and stuff like that. So Super Data Science, but I will also share it very, very soon. So John basically told me that TensorFlow used to be very different from what it is right now. It was very unintuitive and people complained about it as soon as PyTorch came out because PyTorch was super intuitive. And now TensorFlow is becoming more and more like PyTorch. You know, they, they're kind of changing the syntax. Now, I haven't experienced it on my own, but smart people are saying saying important things. You know, I listen. <laughs> uh, cool. So shorts. No, not shorts. We'll need playlists. I was about to show you the PyTorch uh, tutorials I have. We have Halloween songs. How is that public? Ah, oh, I need to. <laughs> Novagorny. Oh wow. Okay, I, I gotta turn turn off the public stuff. I have artificial intelligence and. Sorry guys, I have artificial intelligence and machine learning entire, entire playlist right over here. I'm just gonna make my screen a bit smaller, and I move my head here so you can see a bunch of videos. There you go. There's a bunch of them, you know, and many of them are about Python. You might find something interesting right over there. I'm just going to share it in the comments. Uh, I think it's going to lead you to the playlist. I hope. There you go. I have shared it. Cool. Let's close it. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, Ut Utkarsh, this one is uh, a little bit more technical. I know. It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit too much. We're going to get into too many deep details. Um, hello from Egypt. Ahlan was Sahalan. Ahlan was Sahalan. Monkey Prince. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, only now I've seen it. Thank you so much. It was it was almost 20 minutes ago. I, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's is happy family season. It is. It is. Uh, Colorado here. Nice. Hello, Nick from 
from the, the, the homeland of South Park. I really appreciate Colorado based on that. <laughs> is it Colorado? Yeah, it is Colorado. Uh, hello, you're so cute. Uh, thank you. By the way, thanks for all your courses. Absolutely, Afro, absolutely. I'm, I'm here to help. That, that's what I'm doing. Monkey Prince. Thanks again for, for the awesome for the awesome super chat. I've been enjoying your tutorials, but this is my first time catching the live stream. Well, hi, welcome, welcome. How con concerned are you about AI making human coding obsolete? <sighs> I'm concerned that human coders are saying that AI is coding better than them. I don't truly believe that a piece of AI can replace an actual programmer. If it can, you know what, maybe programming skills should be improved a little bit because there's a lot of variation when writing code. Each of us is doing it differently. And you know what, even though there's a lot of, there's a lot of guides that are trying to make a consistent um, system, like design guides and, and stuff like that, PEP, like whatever it's called. Um, I think that each of us has our own way of doing so. And each piece of software that we create we always keep developing it. We keep making it better. We keep involving new technologies in it because our field, you know, when it comes to Python even, like look at Python. Every couple of months, there is a new release of Python, which is better than the previous. Now, in many cases, libraries change. For example, Selenium. My first few videos about Selenium, they had one type of syntax. If you now try to use the same syntax with the current version of Selenium, you can't because it's not going to work. So things change, things adapt. And how can a, an AI be aware of this thing unless it's a very dangerous AI that is self-learning and must be turned off immediately? You know, I make a distinction between, between what we call AI nowadays, which is like a neural network that is making decisions, right? But it has a very narrow field of expertise. It's an expert when it comes to cats and dogs, but it knows nothing of giraffes. This cannot replace a human. When we're talking about a piece of AI, which is another form of intelligence, right? It's another form of being. That's the whole purpose of AI. All those Turing tests that people are talking about, all those, um, if you watched Ex Machina or, or films like that, if you watched The Terminator and, and, and these type of stuff, we are talking about a form of life. We're not talking about a narrow field of expertise. We are talking about someone who... who an actual being, right? And this is the type of AI that a lot of companies are streaming to build. And I think that humanity is not ready for it yet. If it exists, I am scared. I'm very scared. Um, it's something that we need to discuss publicly before we make, because this one can actually replace us. Us. Chat GPT, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's like that. But uh, um, in the future, we may have some real issues. Like we'll we'll be dealing with matrix type of AI, the one that suddenly can decide that humans are obsolete indeed and you know try to do a bunch of nasty stuff to us. Yeah. But that might be just me being paranoid, folks. I don't want to scare you. <laughs> but I don't think Chat GPT is that smart. We're gonna try to break it in a in a live stream very soon. You're invited to come to my home. I'm from Bangladesh. I followed you every video, especially bot series. Dr. Python, if I'm ever in Bangladesh or anywhere nearby, I will talk to you. I promise. You know what? I really want to start traveling the world and, and getting to, you know, meet, doing some meetups and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if my channel is big enough to arrange stuff like that, but uh, that's a dream I have. And hopefully, hopefully it will be, it will come to life. I would love to travel the world and physically meet you guys because this entire interaction through the computer is nice. But I think it's a bit more valuable if we meet in the same room and we get to program and code together. I think we will learn so much more out of it. Where not only I get to speak, but all of us get to speak. I think that that, that would be very interesting to see. Um, what is your take on certifications? <sighs> okay, I'm doing a degree in computer science. I am doing it the right way, okay? I'm getting the perfect certification. But because I'm doing it, I know exactly how. Sorry, guys, I, I cannot talk about it here because I'm about since it's a live stream that has to do with my university. <laughs> it's a live stream that I'm submitting as, as part of my, uh, you know, midterm exam. I cannot say nasty stuff about my university here, but I do have a lot of stuff to say. OK, I 
my views on certifications are not positive. Like I think that that self-taught developers are I, self-taught. Being self-taught is is more impressive than learning um, officially in a university, and especially if your university's passing grade is forty, which is which is in the case of my university. I don't know what exactly it proves. You know, if you if you study some course and um, you got forty two in the exam out of 100 points how does it prove you understand something how does it prove you are qualified right i i don't know you tell me you tell me i don't think that 40 should be a qualifying grade um to get a degree but uh see that's the thing when you have a degree nobody asks you what's your <laughs> what was your grade in the degree they just uh, do you have a degree or not yes or no and and that's your answer but they don't know that you slacked off like and all your modules were like 40 right it's, i think it's stupid but that's that's all i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> i said too much already folks yeah <laughs> i shouldn't have I, I probably shouldn't have why not use gpt on c plus stuff i think you can yeah, I think you can. A bunch of programming languages, not just Python, if I'm not mistaken. But I haven't tried it yet. I'll tell you why. There's a part where it asks you for your phone number. And I look at that part and I scratch my head as to why chat GPT needs my phone number. Now, I, I think this is, this is something that Badger told me. Badger said it's it's going to prevent bots, you know, for, from happening. But the thing is, chat GPT has some very strong protection against bots so the first thing that i've noticed actually if we, if we can go in there no i don't want to do i don't, don't want to do it let's do it in a different stream okay but uh it, it has a layer of protection from cloudflare which is very very strong it can be of course bypassed okay especially with selenium but in, in the end of the day it's it's gonna prevent a lot of bot makers with not too much programming skills from you know interacting with it in addition there's a captcha and it's a captcha with images which makes kind of which you you pretty much need to know a bit of ai a little bit about neural networks in order to break so there's a lot of precaution steps and i know for a fact that phone numbers it's not something that you know that belongs to that means that you're an actual human being just because you have a phone number doesn't make you, you know, human. My uncle has a piece of software. Um, oh, if my phone was here, I could have showed you it. Um, audio recorder, it's called, I believe, I believe. But um, it's a piece of software that can make phone calls. So, for example, my uncle lives in, in uh, Boston. And I'm getting a phone call from a number in Toronto, which is in a completely different you know, country, Toronto, Canada. And my uncle lives in a different country, in a different city. But I'm getting a phone call from a phone number in Toronto. OK, so we can all we can all have access to a list of phone numbers. And it doesn't mean that we're humans, uh, you know, so I don't know why they're collecting phone numbers. And that's why I haven't tried chat GPT yet. I will, though. I will. Uh, I have to. We'll do a nice stream. You guys are talking about it so much. I cannot not cover it. And I complain about it so much. How can I complain about it if I haven't tried it, right? It's it's just unfair. I must do it. Uh, we will. We will. We will schedule it. Um, I'm going to see when Badger can join me. Um, and yeah, we, we will do this together. Don't worry. Uh, how Python handle big numbers? Please reply. Python handles big numbers amazingly, okay? Python is... <sighs> it's just a good good programming language but to be fair a lot of programming languages handle big big numbers very well because numbers are, are you know it's it's not it, they don't take up too much memory as images or videos or or you know more complex um data types right um so yeah uh, it should be fine should be fine. If you give me an example, we can test it. Like, what's a big, big, big number? Um, first time this week, I got frustrated how slow Python was. Oh, really? Um, using while instead of for helped, but I see the slow list has a challenge in some cases. I think that when it comes to data science and working with big, big collections of data, it's not really about Python. is is about the way we fetch this data, 
because we're used to use pandas for everything but even pandas has a bit of it has a few limitations so instead of accessing the entire data frame we need to break the data frame into batches uh, which is very similar to what we do with artificial intelligence now when we train um, a neural network we don't expose it to the millions of images we have at once we break those images into batches of usually 32 images or 64 images, and we feed those images to the network batch by batch. Same goes when we are dealing with data science, especially data frames of millions and billions of, I don't know if billions exist, but millions of entries. Uh, we need to break it into batches and then we need to load it. So I think that the slowness I think that the only reason why, why Python known as a slow programming language is because they compare it to, uh, to C++ or C Sharp, which are low level languages. And the reason why it's so much faster is because we are able to specify the number of bits that, our, um, that, that each of our elements takes up in memory. And that way it makes our software much more efficient. When we don't specify the number of bits, Python assumes it needs it probably needs more bits than what it actually needs because we need to have the ability to change this data type to a string or a boolean later on so obviously it stores more bits in memory than it should right um we just we're not as specific with python and that's why it's a bit slower but i don't know if you guys noticed but each time a new version of python comes out right now it's python 311 it is faster it is better and it is stronger and it doesn't stop it just keeps going and going and going. And folks, within a few years, I promise, I don't know if I can promise it, but I I, I think, I believe that Python will be faster than all of them together because the growth of Python is insane. When I started this channel, I made a very big gamble. I really like the syntax. I really enjoyed Python. I have no had no idea that it will become so popular and it will just grow in popularity. Right now, a lot of people from different programming languages, especially data scientists, they end up they, they end up with Python. I mean, there is R, there is MATLAB, there's so many different alternatives, but Python just makes things so much easier and there's so much support. That's something that, that not a lot of people are talking about because if, if you are looking for some kind of a solution, if you are stuck on some kind of an error in Python, you will most likely find a solution very fast. If you do the same for C++ or C Sharp, good luck. Good luck. I've done some projects with it. It was it was not as easy. Um, and it was not as easy to understand the answers in Stack Overflow. I find that in Python, it's a bit more simple because it's a high level language. Started Python four months ago, used free code camp and your videos to help. Awesome. Thank you so much for your help. I need some more uh, coffee. So uh, Cobbers is Recommending free code camp to those of you who are looking to start learning Python. Definitely check them out. They have so many tutorials, so many tutorials. Each of them are like eight hours long, <laughs> like very long tutorials. If if I started to make those, I'll disappear for a year probably. <laughs> I'm too I'm too picky to do something so so long. Mm. Thank you guys for bearing with me as I sip my coffee. <laughs> I took a programming principles course and I learned Python up to OOP and file objects. Nice. What would you recommend to take next? So did you include OOP or not? I have a bunch of really cool OOP object-oriented programming tutorials. Um, I have an entire playlist. Do I have an entire playlist? I might. Let's see if I have it here. Uh, so first of all, practice. If you just learned, if you just learned project object-oriented programming. It's definitely something that requires a bit of practice. It's, oh, come on, come on. There you go. Here's my entire playlist. So in the first video, I teach the basics. In the second video, we talk about private class members and inheritance, um, and we also practice it. In the third video, we are doing an actual really cool project. We are uh, basically, uh, drawing a forest of random tree objects in different heights, different colors, different shapes. It's really cool. And especially if you're into video games, I think you're going to like this project. It's uh, it's using OpenCV, but you can easily apply it to like Pygame and stuff like that uh, for sure. 
Uh, but cool, yeah. Once you, once you're comfortable with object oriented programming, you can definitely move on with some you know specialty libraries. So if you're interested in video games, go explore Pygame. If you're interested in like user interface, like a graphic user interface, go exploring uh, Skinter or PyQt5 or Kiwi or KiwiMD, which which is my favorite. And KiwiMD was here in the comments earlier. Um, what else? You can explore machine learning frameworks such as uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow. You can explore um, statistical libraries and things of that sort. Whatever floats your boat, just, just continue to do awesome projects because object-oriented programming is pretty much the most, I would say it's the most complicated concept to grasp uh, when it comes to Python, uh, unless you know we're talking about um, non-programming concepts such as well, yeah, I guess it is a programming concept, unless we're talking about <laughs> algorithms and data structures, which is even more complex. It is a, it is what programming is all about. Sorry, all right. I was about to say something, <laughs> and I forgot what I was talking about. That's why. Uh, can you make a more KVMD videos? I was just talking about KVMD. Uh, some new functions you didn't cover in the last video. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, there there are some changes to KVMD. I've noticed uh, he's been doing lots of good work there. Um, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. I, I need to. So right now the the projects that I'll be working on as soon as school ends, because it's hard because my school is so similar to what I do at work, work Python simplified, right? Because it's so similar, it is hard for me to switch between one and the other. So as long as I'm working on school, I'm kind of, I'm putting the pro the, the, the channel aside for a bit and then I'm back and, and, and until I finish it, I need to finish it first. And once I finished, I'm, I'm fine. If I was learning biology, if I was learning architecture or anything that is not related to programming, it would have been much easier. It wouldn't be so confusing, but because it's so similar to one another, Oh, yeah. School takes up a lot of my time, unfortunately. Um, now, the projects that I'll be working on after school, um, one of them is basically taking a very large database. I, I want to test this one out, loading it in batches and exploring it. Uh, that That's one of the key things I need to do. Um, in addition, there, there's going to be a Docker tutorial. So very, very similar to the if name equals main, super simplified, you know, version of Docker, because I find it quite, quite complicated. And that's why I think I need to simplify it. Um, so yeah, working on that. And another data science project uh, using Docker, you know, af after the Docker video. So these are the things I'm working on at the moment. In addition, I've promised you a uh, Tkinter executable, um, converting your Tkinter app into an actual executable piece of software that operates on every operating system, not just on the same operating system you are using. Um, this one involves um, Py2 to, Py2 to executable library, Py2exe, and it also involves a software called InnoSetup, which then converts this executable file into something you can use on any operating system. Now, the reason why it took me so long is because I had to fix the database um, of my Tkinter app. The database was not perfect there, and now it's perfect. So I just need to film it, which is also on the list. So it's happening. It's happening. Uh, do you have experience in JavaScript? Yes. Yes. I, I knew JavaScript before I knew Python. I come from uh, web development. Um, if you can give me tips on how to get started with we did greetings from Germany. Now, it, it, I'll be honest with you. JavaScript and Python are not very difficult. Every time where I switch from from um, from Python to JavaScript, which, for example, is what I did for this module in university, I was supposed to make like four video games, um, clones of video games. One of them is like Space Invaders. Another one is like uh, Angry Birds, stuff like that. I had to do this in JavaScript. And I started working on this project right after I finished working on my Twitter bot tutorial. So every time, every time I was making a for loop in uh, in JavaScript, I was making it in a Python syntax. Okay, which, which is which is a big no no, of course. But you you cannot you cannot help yourself. It's so so similar. Now, um, I think JavaScript. Um, yeah, the best the best way to learn something is just to try it. Try it with with all kinds of projects. Watching somebody explaining you in a video how to do things is nice, but that's not the whole point. 
you need to have a software open, a coding software open, and you have to follow what the person is explaining with your own fingers. Your fingers have memory. And when you actually do those things, when you actually um, follow, you know, those lessons that you're learning from, you, you remember it too. So it, it better infiltrates your memory that way. Um I find that whenever, for example, in school, I'm now taking this uh, graphics programming course, right? It's a very interesting course, but it's all about velocity. It's all about gravity. It's about applying forces. It's about magnitude and things that have to do with physics. Now, usually when it comes to physics, my brain shuts down. I, I, I'm smart. I, I can understand it, but my brain doesn't want to. OK, so this course is is all about that. You know, it's about physics engines. It's about creating a video game and applying forces that we have in reality on the video game characters. So the only reason why I like this course so much is because every time after they explain me this complex uh, mathematical or physics formula, they then show me how to do it in code. And since they demonstrate how to do it in code, they do it step by step, and I do it alongside them, this entire world of physics is no longer intimidating to me. And it is very intimidating. Like, I don't like physics unless it's quantum physics. And then, you know, it's a level playing field because nobody knows. Those who tell you they know quantum physics, they know it relatively to others because it's it's quite the field. <laughs> you know, it's very, <laughs> it, not a, a lot of it is not proven. You know, it's all, it's quantum theory for a reason. So yeah, enough with physics. <laughs> Forget about it. Uh, the real question is, how do you land your first job? That's the problem. So e-commerce beast, definitely check out this. Definitely check out this live stream I had with Geeks for Geeks that my head is blocking. This one, Tech Jobs Tips. Um, we have discussed a lot of those stuff there. Um, for sure, for sure. And and maybe then apply to Geeks for Geeks because they gave you all these advices. They might as well hire you, right? <laughs> Has anyone tried MIT OCW course? Uh, view lad, what a headache. <laughs> Well, MIT in general sounds sounds quite complex. You know, it's a it's a very prestigious uh, type of an institute. Um, yeah, I haven't tried this. I, I haven't tried any courses by MIT yet. Uh, Gutag book is tough. Um, never never seen this one. Actually, I, I rarely study through books. Rarely, um, I find that documentation is a bit more convenient to me. I don't know why. I don't know why. Style is important. Absolutely. Style is, is half of it. St style is a lot of, of you know, the, the programs we build. Uh, give up really fast. Please help me. Oh, why do you give up? Don't give up. Wait, with Python? Oh, my God. Python is, is one of those things that require patience and require a bit of experience, but... As soon as you're patient and experienced, as soon as you make a few projects, you can, you know, the sky's the limit. You can do anything with, with Python. So I highly recommend to stick around and keep learning it. Hi, I am Fadi from Palestine. Ahalan wa sahalan, Fadi. Thank you for your courses. You are amazing. For sure. Thank you so much for tuning in and for your comment. Uh, Vignesh. Padam Vignesh, you should try the library Polars. What's Polars? I've never heard of Polars. Instead of using pandas for data analysis, it is based on Rust, but can be written in Python. Ha! Huh. I wonder if Polars is a C, C Python library. Because if it's not, it might be slow. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. For sure. It's the first time I hear about it, Vignesh. Like, I, I wish I heard about it earlier. Um, or you use PyCharm, you can auto format. I don't like auto formatting and all those stuff. Um, I also, I, I think I used PyCharm very briefly. Um, the, the only IDE, like the actual proper IDE I use is probably Wayscript and it's because it's in the cloud. Usually I'm a big fan of either Jupyter Notebook or of, you know, text editors such as, you know, brackets and, Simple stuff, you know, free stuff, uh, sublime, these type of stuff. 
Is C++ better than Python? Um, depends in which sense. It, it's all about personal preferences. Again, C++ is very different from Python. It's a low-level language versus a high-level language. So when you're dealing with low-level language, you need to be very specific. And it, it takes you more time to, uh, to build your software. You're obviously running into more errors. Um, you're running into errors that you will never see in Python, like data type errors. You will never see it. You also, you know, having sometimes troubles with compiling your software and understanding exactly where the error is in your code. If it's a compiler error, it's, it's quite tough. Uh, with Python, it's a bit more straightforward. And I think that in general, the syntax of Python, the commands we use are so close to English that it's just, to me, it's a no brainer. To me, it's Python all the way, but I know people that, that, Again, we've seen ex examples, uh, Praslav, uh, he, he was uh, earlier in this stream, he was saying that he came from C++, but he finds Python difficult, right? So it all depends on your preferences and what is comfortable to you, right? It, it's all about that. Which languages have you advanced more? Um, so I, I would say Python is number one. It's, you wake me up in the middle of a night, I can write you a Python software. Uh, same goes for JavaScript. I'm very comfortable with JavaScript. In particular, you know, I've done like four projects with P5JS. It's really cool. Really, really, really cool JavaScript library. Really, really cool. You can make computer games like that. You know, it's it, you don't need to have any experience at all. It's very intuitive, very, very simple. Um, so yeah, Python and JavaScript, number one. Um, everything else after. Everything else comes, comes after for sure. Um, if you use PyCharm, you can auto format. Yeah, we've seen this one before. Amika, yes, uh, you remember. Uh, hosted on Lindo Cheap. Oh, like the, ah, it's still the Django comments. You guys, I'm so slow. There's probably millions of common sense. <laughs> Clay, are you hiring? <laughs> I wish I can't wait to earn enough money to hire someone. I do need help. I need lots of help. The only person I can hire right now is my brother and he doesn't want to work for me. I, I tried convincing him, but he prefers to be a bartender. So I guess, I guess I, I'm suspecting it's because there's lots of ladies he wants to meet in the bartending position. But uh, yeah, I do need help. Uh, I just, I can't, I, I, the problem with being a student and uh, once in a while disappearing for like a week or two, you know, from, from YouTube is, is the fact that you don't have a consistent, uh, consistent source of income, you could call it. And if you don't have a consistent source of income, hiring someone is just it's just chaos. I can't it's irresponsible. So I, I got to keep doing this on my own for a bit more. But when I do hire, I will let you guys know. I'll probably hire Badger if if he's uh, he's willing to. <laughs> to take uh, the salary I'm about to uh, to offer or or Tom or Josh or Siam or, you know, the fo folks I already know, you know, f through Discord. And, you know, I know them for many, many years. We met, uh, well, I guess two years. We met uh, many times in like uh, video conferences and stuff. So I feel like they're my friends already. And, you know, I can vouch that they're reliable people. So, uh, yeah, if, if I am doing some hiring, I'll probably start by asking, you know, the Discord modes if they're interested. You know, if, if I can pay them enough because they all have really good jobs. <laughs> I don't think they, they may not want to do it. <laughs> it's too much of a risk. Uh, thank you so much, Cap. Thank you so much. Uh, Python is not perfect. I, in, I encounter bugs. Of course, of course. Uh, like opening files in a loop, in another loop, or problem with lists, tuples. Things that don't work as they should, maybe in C++, no problem. Mm. I've encountered so, you know, in the end of the day, a lot of the problems that are caused by languages, you know, we have to admit they're, they're caused by us. <laughs> they are caused by the way that we are writing code and, you know, we are basically structuring the our code, you know, line by line. Um, sometimes we make good decisions. You know, sometimes we write algorithms that, are not very successful. And, and this is where a lot of the errors come from. Now, if we use a language in a way that it was not intended, that's where we see errors. So um, some of it is our oopsies. <laughs> you know, we have to admit it. We have to. It's not always Python. Um, I am happy that you have created a channel on YouTube. This is 100% for you. Thank you so much, Mika. I had no idea I'm going to do it well. <laughs> when I started, 
<laughs> I was shooting in the dark um, and still, you know, I, I know I can do it better. I still know it. I, if you guys only seen how small my office is, you would, you would know that there's a big challenge. You know, you see, I have this very wide screen, right? But that's all the office I have. The screen barely fits in the office and, and that's my office. It's like a warehouse. It's like a pantry. So I hope that one day I'm going to have a proper office. I'm going to have people helping me and you know, with all the processes, not just with like writing the code, but also with filming and with editing and doing things that, you know, one person is very hard for them to be experts in, you know, you can do it nicely, but you will always look at more, you know, at, at other channels, you know, and you'll be jealous because, you know, these channels, they're working with a team, you know, the, the team of experts, one of them is an expert in lighting, another one is an expert in audio, another one's an expert in uh, filming or videography and stuff like that. But when you do this on your own, you're very often just running like a chicken without a head, you know, <laughs> trying to find your way in this universe. But I'm really happy you guys are enjoying it. Um, this this is incredible. I would never believe that I have a channel with so many amazing people that, you, you know, that are, they are talking to me in the comments, you know, and many of you guys have seen, I've seen you before, you know, it's not the first time. So that's, that's what even cooler. Uh, Richard, I've been watching uh, Being Quiet. I uh, see, I see, Richard. But what do you want to say? I'm working on a training bot in Python. Nice. Nice. Let me know how it works out. Right now, like, I'm, I'm also, like, in the field of bots, as you've seen uh, this, this prototype of mine. It's also going to be, uh, hopefully, hopefully it will be a really sophisticated piece of software that a lot of you guys will use, and we will replace Selenium one day, hopefully um yeah cool i'm super happy you're you're you know you're working on a project richard uh tell me tell me how it comes out i learned c plus plus it was so literal did you eric i i found it i found it the other side of the universe but maybe it's just because i'm so used to python you know it, it's a matter of personal preferences in many cases some of us just you know like being specific <laughs> some of us don't like being specific it depends on the person Lilo is stitch is the best. Thank you, Daniel. I'll wear it for the next stream. I have a task somewhere in the closet. All cartoons in my head at work. <laughs> Twitter is a different world. Right now, yeah, Twitter changed a lot. I agree. I agree. My spouse is finally on Twitter. He hasn't been there for a very long time, and now he, he finds it very entertaining. <laughs> He's a busy guy. He doesn't have time for it, but uh, he joined it. I learned, see, it was so dogmatic. Uh, yeah. So the problem with Python is if you want to learn Python, you can learn Python by learning Python. You need to learn C because Python is based on C and to understand programming concepts. I think you can understand programming concepts with, you know, Python alone. You know, many of the universities, they don't necessarily teach you right away with like a C++ or C sharp because it's, generally quite intimidating many universities would start with like a like a high level programming language such as javascript it is you know no js it's a very very um integral part of my degree currently um but somehow p5js is way more like i have at least four sorry i have like six projects with p5js already and i'm not done and I'm not aware of too many, you know, employers or too many startups that are using P5JS. So I'm not sure why that's the one. But um, yeah, you can understand programming concepts without knowing any programming language. You can actually do everything with pseudocode. Um, pseudocode is, is basically something that can be applied to any programming language. It's just a series of logical operations and algorithms. Um, as long as you are comfortable with algorithms, uh, which is basically sets of instructions. You are comf you can be comfortable with programming. That's the that's the main point, I think. The algorithm side of things. Um, no, you can learn Python without C. I'm a mere example of it. Yeah, I agree absolutely. So just because the so when I'm talking about C Python libraries, what I actually mean is that if you want to view the, the commands that are given in C, you can. But as a Python developer, why would you do it? Just use the Python commands. You don't need to go down to the very small details. Just use the Python commands that those libraries offer you because very often they're just, they're super simple, right? Um, 
it gives you the option to be ambiguous or specific. It's entirely up to you. It's just, it's a bit more costume than other programming languages. Uh, need more coffee? I absolutely agree. DMO. Mm. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, this is, this. we're here for two hours and that's all that I've been drinking. Holy smokes. I promised myself it's going to be a very short stream and we're almost at two hours. I have a very big project to write, but yeah, um, <laughs> it is what it is. So folks, by the way, actually, I think I closed it already, but uh, I, I would like to show you my prototype once again, because if we're already here and I already have your attention and I know, and I know it's sometimes annoying, but I have to keep pushing it because I need to have some good feedback. I know how much feedback I have in the form. I haven't uh, looked at it yet. But yeah, I have this prototype for you guys to uh, to review. What happened? Let's uh, refresh it because I don't see the icon I'm supposed to be seeing. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. Okay. I'm going to show you this prototype once again. And no, this is not a prototype of Google. <laughs> I am not yet that uh, sophisticated with my coding skills, but yeah. Okay, let's have another look and please send me your feedback. There's a form in the description. You can actually view this prototype on your own. So we click on this Chrome extension icon and this opens a software called Automator. If we press on load URL, we can load a ready script from our, um, from our GitHub or anywhere else, a script that already has a series of automations going on. We can load it and we can use it um, without a web driver like we do with Selenium, because we already have this browser window and this Chrome extension is automating the browser window. Now, if we don't have a file to load, we press on record and then we press on some kind of an element on the page. For example, we want to click on this input field and voila, the code associated with the click on the input field is appearing to in the text box below. We can then click on other elements. The click on the image element is appearing there. Now, once we are happy with our recording, we press on stop and then we can edit this text box. So for example, instead of interacting with a single element like this logo or this input field, we can interact with all the logos or all the input fields on the page. We simply change find element to find elements and we wrap image.get attribute inside a for loop. So this is just a rough example. Now, once we are happy with the code, we press on play and then we can see our browser window being automated. So this is some sort of a replacement to Selenium. If you guys don't mind, please check out the, the form in the description. I have a Google form uh, where I'm asking you for your feedback. It's five super short questions. I would really appreciate it if you can fill it up. Um, it's anonymous. I'm not asking for your name or anything. I don't know your name or email address or any of those stuff, but please, this will really, really help me. Um, it's helping me with school. I'm submitting a project in three days and this is part of it. You can help, you can help me with that for sure. Um, cool. Let's see. I always push to GitHub after each commit. Perfect, Eric. That That's how all of us should be operating, to be honest. Um, not many of us do that, but uh, I think we should. I think we should. I'm enlarging my screen. So folks, my camera is about to go off. So if I disappear from the screen, I'm just going to say bye to everyone and, 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 and go. I'm just warning you because we're nearing the time that my camera gets overheated or maybe the battery runs out, whatever. I have a small, tiny camera. Uh, the GitHub visualizing the green uh, squares is called Waffle Chart. Awesome. Thank you so much, Utkarsh, for the, for the professional lingo. I very often use a simple lingo like, uh, like stuff. I shouldn't be saying stuff. I should be saying things. Things. <laughs> um, I use a bit bucket to handle my repositories. Cool. So you guys can see all kinds of nice tools that will help you with your uh, GitHub um, GitHub venture. Hmm. I am learning Python after I have used R for years. Mika, I'll tell you a funny story. I was actually when I learned about Python, I was actually supposed to learn R. So what happened is I was reading this. Uh, this article about uh, Tesla's autopilot. And in the article, it says that Tesla's autopilot is utilizing machine learning technology. Now, utilizing is present progressive. It is not future, it is not past, it is happening right now. And I didn't know that we had such technology before. So I freaked out and I decided that machine learning and, and 
and AI is what I want to do in my life, and I have to sign up on a course immediately. So the first co course I signed up to was an R course. Okay, and after I started learning it, I started taking it. I realized that mm, no, it's not for me. And then I found the Python course uh, that started this entire journey. Right. So I supposedly also came from R, but I cannot say that I remember much of it. I just I didn't like it. Can't remember why. Not sure. Maybe the name is not as fun as Python because. R, I do like R because it so you sound like a pirate when you say it. And I love pirates, but uh, Python is just has a nice ring to it. <laughs> um, I just started using GitHub, still getting familiar. You know what, GitHub, I think very often it, it depends on how you use it. Because I like using the user interface. I don't like doing this terminal commits because I think it takes way too long. Like it, it's way too much time, you know? So I just prefer to create my repositories manually. Now I'm not signed in here because it's, it's a brand new version of my computer. So I got to install everything and sign up to everything. But uh, I'm, I'm always using the, you know, I create a repository by clicking on create a repository button. When I make commits, I'm uploading some code, um, you know, uh, using the uploading tool. I don't do it uh, through my terminal. So uh, many people will be upset at that, but it is what it is. It's faster, I think, in my opinion. Uh, thank you so much, Maria. That was very helpful. Thank you, Nick. I'm glad I, I was able to help. I'm not sure with what, because I'm probably reading comments from a long time ago. <laughs> um, I'm thinking build a new library in Python for mechanical design engineers. Um, it depends on whether mechanical design engineers are actually coding. That's the biggest question. Are they actually coding or do they prefer to use like a, um, th a 3D engineering type of apps? Um, my dad is not using coding, for example. He's a mechanical engineer. Um, he has all kinds of fancy software. He has a fancy computer with some enterprise uh, some enterprise computer parts um, he's using, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it depends on their preferences. Greetings from Ukraine, Maria, Dimas, Rajdistvom, Rajdistvom, hello, hello. Greetings from Vancouver. Um, let's see. Actually, oh my God, I have so many comments at the bottom. So because my camera is about to disappear, I'm gonna scroll to the very, very bottom because I think. Uh, I think, I think, whoa, whoa, you guys, it's so many, so many comments. Holy smokes. How much of it did I miss? Yikes. Um, matter of taste. R has some classes logic that feels good on my preferences. Okay. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of folks in the science field are uh, using R for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. R. It, I, again, I cannot point my finger on it for, for me too. Like, I can't remember what was it that I didn't like about it. Um, awesome. Utkarsh, thank you so much for filling up the Google form. Um, hello, Muhammad. Hello, hello. Sabah ele. No, not Sabah. It's not Sabah. I don't know how to say good evening in, in Arabic. I don't think so. Uh, sabah is morning. Sabah el Hayr, it's good morning. Sabah el Nur is how you reply. But, uh, how do you say how do you say night? Wow, I, I'm not sure. Um, greetings from Brazil. Greetings, greetings, folks. Okay, and I'm climbing up in, up the comments. By the way, yes, I'm, I'm I'm gonna get there. Hopefully, my camera is not gonna uh, disappear. Cybersecurity is a very good career path. Very, very good career path. Very, very rewarding and very, very needed. I think everyone needs a good cybersecurity expert, uh, especially nowadays. Um, Maria, are you in grad school? I am in, uh, I'm doing my Bachelor of Science in the University of London. I am uh, learning remotely. Yeah. That's my current status. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. May uh, we contribute to it? Yes, I think once we are done with the project, it will be open source. Um, it will be out there and we will wait until we're being graded, I think, before we release it publicly because um, you need to get a grade before you can make some more changes. So you submit it and it has to be, you know, the, the, the type of work that the, the person who grades it 
will, will then be able to view it. So maybe after we get the grade, we can then, you know, I, I can then share it on the channel and maybe you guys can contribute as well. But yeah, um, in addition, you know, if you guys are very excited about it, maybe we can build it, you know, build something like that on the channel because the ones we are building is a bit more complex. It has React, it has a bunch of, uh, bunch of components to it. Maybe we can simplify it. Maybe, who knows, who knows? Uh, oh, you guys are talking to one another. Okay. Maria, let's just wait when the camera turns off. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Um, I I was thinking that I will finish this stream after an hour. And, you know, as a piece of evidence, we're still, still here two hours and four minutes. I'm not going anywhere. It's hard for me to say bye before I, you know, if I don't have to. <laughs> I just, just keep staring here at the screen and, and talking to you guys. It's it's more fun than going and doing my midterm that's for sure i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying it way more uh, maria did you watch lex friedman's interview with guido van rusum the creator of python okay uh, i've seen it why python is faster or something like that i'll check it out i've seen the thumbnail i think i ah oh, we jinxed it the camera is gone richard what did you do <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'll, I'll definitely watch it, though, uh, Nick. I, I've noticed it, but I didn't click on it because I was so, so busy. Now, folks, thank you so much for all your comments. Like, I, I see them. I really want to I really want to reply to all of them. But my camera is gone. And I think it's not very entertaining when I am frozen on the screen. <laughs> so, folks, thank you so much for your comments. I'm sorry if I missed some of them. Now, because I'm trying to to answer to all your comments, I'm uh, doing it step by step, and uh, I end up missing a lot of it. So my apologies. Um, so folks, I will see you very soon, very, very soon in another really cool live stream. This one is about chat GPT, and I'm going to have Badger helping me, hopefully, and we will try to break it. So for this one, um, it's going to be a surprise stream. You will see it two hours before it happens. Um, and yeah, and we will try to do some magic. So my apologies to all the folks that I didn't reply to. I didn't have a chance to reply to. I see all kinds of awesome comments. I see folks from so many different places commenting. Thank you so much. I had lots of fun. And thank you so much for helping me with my project. I will talk to you guys very, very soon. In the meanwhile, bye-bye.